These are the best highlights from today's 2024 LCK Summer Split matchup. This is exactly the way you have to play this as the Viego. Try to get early objective wins. And so far, I've been nothing but impressed by DRX. Yeah, the timing's so good that Fake is back because, you know, they obviously have a lot of prior bot, they have a lot of prior top, but mid is the one where you're like, mm, you know, I think Owner's gonna have to scarf him. Yeah, Owner is up a level, and he is going to get two of the grubs. And with Faker nearby level 6, they were considering it, but uh, especially seeing Pleta in mid, they're just going to back off, and that's one grub over to DRX. Yep. Just getting a single grub makes a big difference. Hamtech Soul uh, just giving you no real late game option in the back of it. Oh, Frog in trouble. Yeah, it's a Senna gank that comes in, but again, this is Renekton, and they're just going to try to turn this one around. They got Viego coming up here as well as the TP, and that's an Aurelian Soul. You're not getting away from that as he glides on in. The ult has to be flashed by Guma, and that's a nice first blood going to DRX. He can keep this wave away. Yeah. He can prevent the die, but Faker might just shuffle him if he does. The Root's gonna come in, but that's Dominus as he goes in, the flash from Owner, but they just don't have the damage. I mean, this is under a turret against a Fed Renekton with Dominus and Black Cleaver finish, so yeah, Frog that dive it, did not work. Playing it really well. I mean, the flash looked weird, but he knew if he got flashed on the edge of the tower, he'd get immediately ulted by Faker, so put himself back deeper under the tower, able to clear the wave, able to negate the play. Yes, it cost his flash and ult, but... And yes, I mean, Frog's gonna be pushed off of this one, but the damage is already done up here on the top side. Yeah, who has set this up, and they have the Rift Herald, which they will probably put into the mid lane now. Yeah. So DRX ahead of tempo here, and nearly a 2,000 gold lead will be short up a little bit by Faker picking up this turret, but... Still feels good for DRX. Yeah, it feels like they're making all the right decisions in this game, honestly, which, you know, considering how many struggles DRX have had in the last several weeks, uh, this is such a good look for them. It's a charge, and DRX moving now towards the Dragon. Feels like maybe with that pressure, they should have just moved towards the Dragon earlier, but trying to stay together as a team. Yeah, T1 going to struggle to approach. Control over Banana Brush and the Aurelian Soul being able to put down that field does make it hard, but Ona looking for a flank. This is a big ult from the side of carry. It's going to hit four people, and the ult from Zayu is going to knock back the Aurelian Soul as a big ult will come from the Aurelian Soul. But now the Vine goes in, and we do have the Nico pop up, but a lot of members on the side of DRX are low. But where is the damage from T1? So many low health bars here on the side of DRX, but nobody can kill anything. Finally, Karia will get the second kill onto the Viego, and Guba on the set at level eight is able to get that final kill onto Pleta as Z1 finally turned that fight around. Super scrappy fight there, but T1 edge up in the end. Guma getting a ton of value in that fight, just unhit for the whole time. And the CC from T1, the target selection, ends up going in their favor, but still felt very close, very down to the wire there. Value you out of those team fight ultimates from the Poppy and the Orn especially. And now trying to get to work here on a frog who does just got his Dominus back, was probably spamming that one, and now do they have the damage to chase him all the way down the lane? The double slice and dice will come in, and Frog does get away. Does manage to dip out of that one. They will still lose that tier one tower in the top lane, but Frog's been doing a pretty good job of weak siding, getting away from sticky situations, and it will just be a trade of towers in the side lane. Even with that fight loss, it was slight, so the gold is about even right now between the two teams, although T1 looking for a bit more here. TP you're gonna come in, they won't give up this tier two if they can help it. Farm, or maybe struggle to get farm in lane. Kerry is very farmed right now. Yeah. Uh, 201 CS, he is super bulky. Not really gonna chunk through this one as the ult is gonna come down, hits the Senna, and a bit of damage here on a carry -a. But it's pretty much just Yahoo trying to hold on to this mid wave. Everybody else is backing. Yeah, very scrappy and sponge playing super aggressively up in the face of the T1 there. Obviously have his, has his ult to buffer like a vial, but now TP coming in, they really want this mid tier one and there's nothing DRX can do to stop it. Yeah, I mean, everybody just backed, so Yahoo alone is not gonna try to hold on to that one. He will stick around and pick up as much Stardust as possible. He's at 215. Aaron Pit. And so T1 will just get another Chemtech break, as now, no fight coming in, but Karia goes way too deep by himself, as now getting flanked by Frog, he is all alone in the enemy jungle, down he will go. That is that very tanky Orn just dead, and now Direct looking at that Baron. Yeah, Ornaman came in for Karia, and he was like, I'm invincible, apparently not, uh, is the lesson he quickly learned. And empowered up for Yahoo now, one member of T1 down, Karia no TP, they used it for the mid tier one, DRX want to start up this Baron. 
C1. Okay, this Baron, specifically the Hunter Baron, does a lot of damage, but this is going to be a rough steal from the side of owner. I mean, there's there's the Kalista, you've got Smite, and they're down a member as the knockback comes in, and now it's just a massive Aurelian Soul ult, and the Kalista gets the Baron, and C1 do a bunch of damage, but they're losing everything else. Nobody on the side of Deerex will fall except Fudge, and Zeus is just on the run here. Yeah, who looking for a little bit more, and he should be... No, oh, the, okay. Oh, too much healing, too much so healing. So the plants are going to come in, and that's fine. That would have just been the bonus. Unkillable Renekton as this game comes along. Yeah, it's really difficult for Drex to hit this tower just because of the threat of the Ornold, the Vial. So they are struggling to get this tier one, but it looks like they're trying to move down towards bot for Zayas. Looking to land a stun or something. The Keeper's Verdict is going to hit the Aurelian Soul away, but the two members of Drex are already on the Poppy, and Zayas cannot survive. As that Poppy looking really squishy at this point in the game with the amount of damage that DRX have and the momentum they have. Yeah, great ult from Yehu and Frog. Layers the CC, kills him. And the damage from Sponge is there as well. The Ornal comes in, but not able to connect. Now T1 are gonna try and find something here on Yehu, but they might be in trouble themselves. Oh, it's a root here on a owner. He's in a ton of trouble. I mean, look at that massive chunk. That the Aurelian Soul is at this point, and the buy alone is obviously going to be taken down. The only gold lead is on the Orc. As Sponge, he's going to get a flash out of the Senna as well. That means that Guma's going to have less survivability on the next Aurelian Soul ult. Set up the Dragon again. It's only a Chemtech, but DRX not going to let them get this one for free. Yeah, this time around, DRX want to fight for it. As a lot of poke damage is coming out of the Azir. Faker doing a good job of that. But is it going to be effective damage here? As we, uh, yeah, we don't have the empowered ult, and a lot of damage does go into the dragon. As T1 will take it down, Drex say, okay, you poked us out. We're not gonna try to force this one. It's just Chemtech Drake. Doesn't do much for us. And now just kind of chasing T1 through their own jungle. They want to push and get some mid prio here, and maybe take down another turret. But now. Perry, I'm gonna throw his ult as the flank is coming in. Sponge in a really rough spot. As now the ult from the Poppy is gonna knock him away. Yehu is all alone on the top side of this one as these fights have been so messy. Pleta, a massive ult. Those Baker in a lot of trouble has to flash away. Carry going in by himself. He's got Goom on the backside. Yehu's gonna go down by himself. Carry is so tanky, but does eventually go down to the human nexus that is Teddy. T1 looking for a little bit more on the chase as the charge comes in from Zeus and it looks like Plena will have to give his life for the team. T1 managed to find that engage and that's the danger against his composition. Oh, oh Teddy! The flash comes in. That's a shutdown for the Vi and importantly, Teddy will be taken down and, and Baron spawns in 15 seconds. Yeah, who is TPing in? They can contest this. They absolutely can with Yehu and how gigantic this dragon is. But the Ornald comes in as T1 look for the oh! and they get absolutely bombed in the river. Massive damage comes out from the Aurelian Soul. And Yehu, he is going to go down to Faker, though, who is do an insane amount of damage. And now Zeus and Karia able to win a 2v2 up there. Frog trades one back, but man, that Aurelian Soul was insane. And DRX stopped the Baron attempts. One of the things that got buffed, you know, the nerf to the cap, cap cube with the buff to the old damage, and you could see it there. And now DRX, they can start it up. They don't have a jungler, but they have a Callista, and that's all you need. They got a Callista, they've got a tank, and this Baron does do a lot of damage. You see Frog is getting a little bit low, and Faker with the Mega Cone is just going to go to the north side here alongside Azeus and try to fight this straight up. Pleta just trying to avoid it as the Fates call, they dodge the ult from the Poppy, but they take out two, and it's only Teddy who does get the Baron in his Teddy, Teddy! What be doing? Teddy able to stand up to two, and no! will take him down at the last moment. Rely on that, but just going to go for the Drake as they do have just an intense amount of damage. The Smite comes in, and the Callista secures it. And T1 say, well, you get it. We'll Frog try to get, get mid prio. Frog in a lot of trouble, goes for the Dominus, is going to get swept, and the team, and Frog is just so tanky, though, as the rest of the DRX is coming on over. They want to take the fight. Owner is in a lot of trouble, but the Yehu ult doesn't do that much damage, and down will go the Renekton. And now Yehu is on the run. Flood is on the other side of the fight, as here comes Faker once again, looking for more. But the peel comes in from Sponge to help out Teddy. Nobody can get on this uh, Kalista. 
as they're trying to lock it's the soldiers in. forward. And owner, here comes Seus looking for this, but the Sonyas is going to keep them alive. And the rest of the team is able to dive under the turret. Seus is able to lock them in place. As now Teddy, the range from the Senna is too long. And maybe, just maybe, T1 has won a big team fight. I don't think they'll win the game. As now they're trying to get Pleta here, who was just pushing mid, and he will just die. Yeah, the human nexus, but Guma is now a fountain laser and just runs him down. T1 managed to get a clean sweep in that fight. Pleta trying to push the wave out to stop the game being ended. They will keep their nexus for now, but. And then Yehu, the ult wasn't empowered, unfortunately. They only get a GA. And then the chase down, the slows from the center really starting to be a problem for the side of DRX. Sponge gets caught up by Carrier. And it's just flank from Zayas as well at the end. The start, the, uh, Zonya's from Yehu is great, but this poppy is so a one or lost fight now. They're clearing Baron uh, vision around the Baron. And they are starting it up. DRX have vision, but T1 have their engages ready to play interrupt on whoever approaches. Yeah, I'm looking for this Keeper's Verdict right now as the ult comes in from Frog. They want to get... Oh, the ult massive knock-up from the side of Plata and the follow-up, but T1 are still turning this one around, but Baker the first one to go down. Gubin's also going to hit the deck. The rest of the team, though, is dead on the side of DRX, but this Viego is getting reset. Finally does go down as it's just the two tanks left and the dragon is just breathing on everyone. A triple kill comes through and Zayus will go down as well. And they have that damage to get the job done. Four members there and then the old follow-up on the back line and they just get melted. It's kind of insane that the fight was still close after that happened. It's credit to, you know, T1 scaling and their comp, I guess, because they got absolutely bodied with that engage by the side of T or DRX. And by the end of it, DRX still won, and they still have their dragon up. They pick up the Baron in live, as you can see. Any little difference is going to help. Yeah. I remember, no empowered ult now. 12k damage. 11.5k damage in the last fight. Yeah, when he can when he can breathe fire, when he can ult like that, he can get the damage down. Yeah, he's doing a monstrous amount, and now he doesn't have the empowered ult. They don't end up fighting the Chemtech Soul. T1 will get it. The team but moving on over. Zeus on the chase here. As C1 do not want to give them this one, but they're already getting to work on this dragon. Yeah, the Cluster Secure really makes a lot of easier, but the fight's going to come in. Oh, the ult there onto the Renekton, but the massive damage there by Yahoo is alone in the front line. He has to go so the ult with the turn, but their dragon is already dead. Down will go Faker, though. Is there a chance? Perhaps for Spuds and Teddy to carry this one. Owner on the chase here. Plenty is going to go down. Teddy's also going to go down. I think T1 have finally broken the backs of DRX in this game one. They managed to take down Yahoo. The ult looks massive. Plenty gets a big ult, but it's just not enough. And Guma, the fountain laser, comes through clutch in this game. T1 able to close it out. An absolute battle to get to this point. And this is just game one. And breaking the record, four kills in a game this summer. An absolute slugfest. I mean, this was just insane. 46 minutes, I did not expect to cast a game like this in game number one of this series as well. But T1, they do take down the Nexus. They get the first win of the best of three. It's actually gonna make it so hard for Callista, because the thing with the Callista is you're focusing damage on a one target, you're stacking up those spears. You're just gonna have to keep stacking and stacking and stacking as the target gets healed up. Yeah. And so Ona just goes in for the Q, forces the flash from Sponge, big advantage in there. And you can see the difference in this game. Look at bot lane, look how pushed up uh, Guma and Kerry are, and look at top lane how pushed up Zeus are. Yehu no longer has the strong side lanes. Oh, the Pick. max range Q, that's a lot of damage, and Yehu is just going to glide away. Uh, he used pretty much all of his health bar there. You know, they've got the momentum here. Teddy pretty low on mana. I feel like a thing as well. I mean, you know, I talked about how... Oh, boy. Here we go. They're just going to run them down, and the silence comes in. But uh, the last hit is going to get the job done as, yes, Bailout keeps him alive for a little bit, but it's still first blood to Gooba already. And it's working well for T1. Gooma already getting the cash in. Wasn't too much gold, but a good start for the Draven lane. And But there is members of T1 around who could come and contest this. So I, I think, DRX, you might have to back off and be happy with one or two. I think they'll get two. 
As C1, they, they move over, but it's a little bit slow. The mid prio is there, but Yahoo is just always threatening coming in. The handshake is going to be utilized. It's not going to hit anyone. His owner's pulled back, and he's just going to get away. And now Faker finds the angle alongside Isaiah, who says, yes, the exhaust is there, but Sponge is already dead. Doesn't have his flash anymore. As Pleta and Yahoo also get pushed away, and owner's going to pick up one grub. T1 just managing to find these angles, getting engaged, and DRX staying for far too long there. The Having a rough time, and Ona goes for the dragon, but I think they were very afraid of the prospect of Ona turning a bot with the ultimate. And yeah. Guma just picked up a Bloodthirster. I just don't oh. see in any scenario how you actually, like, who has the damage to kill him in the bot lane. Like, I'm pretty sure you need Yahoo and Frog to, like, CC chain him to death if he's going to go down. Yeah. Uh, you can no longer play the 2v2 bot. Uh, I mean, we've already seen them just trying to farm and avoid any fights, but that is going to be how you have to play the rest of the lane. Uh, I genuinely see DRX wanting to swap away from the situation in the bot lane. And Guma can kill Carrier, and you can be like, thanks. Yeah, that's, that's you know... Imagine if he got the cash in full. <laughs> We're finding the angles here. That, that is really the only angle, uh, one of the only angles we can see in this point, in this game. Uh, Yehu's in a bit of trouble. The Vi is finally going to use her ult, and the, uh, the silence comes down so you don't get a dash away. You talked about how valuable that is into the Aurelian Soul, and we see it on display already. I might be able to find this. You took a tower hit, and then Guma autos, and his health just goes back up, and you're like, mm. Yeah. Uh, it's like 10% per auto. <laughs> it's like, oh. Mm. Yeah, that's going to be the first turret plug going over to Guma. One of the interesting things with Draven is the extra damage from his axes doesn't crit. But so even if he didn't and he tried to save it, he was silenced. So yeah. it, it just, there's no winning on either side of that play. Look at the difference in plates. I mean, it's 10 plates to zero. And the laning phase dominance from T1 has really left its mark on this game number two. It's not going to look anything like game one unless DRX get a massive turnaround. But they're going into Guma, who is a one-man army, and he has the rest of his team with him. As now, going to get the handshake on here, the engage Renata, but the massive cannon ult on top of everybody. And yes, the exhaust will help out. Down will go the cannon, down will go Zayas, but the rest of the team we're going to follow up here. They're not quite able to, though. A lot of health bars are low as here comes Baker. The sweep uh, gets nobody. And they're just all going to get away. They really changed the, the state of the game. I mean, they, they were able to shore up, I think, about 1,000 gold. And that's about it. And Teddy's doing okay, all things considered. Like, we've talked a lot about how insanely far ahead Guma and Karia are. And they are. By the way, Redemption Rush here from Karia. Yeah. Uh, no Moonstone just yet. But at least Teddy's, you know, he's not that far behind. He has a kill. He didn't die. Set on that mid-tier one and won't let it go down. Using uh, the full force of that team to try and defend it. Uh-oh. Just going to face check into the Shin Zhao. Now it is a Azir, and he is going to dash away. But now we got the ult on top of him as well. He's going to get the knockup on the Baker. Here come the heals from the Soraka. And the redemption to keep him alive. It's just not fair as Baker... His side lane shenanigans are only empowered by the power of Soraka. It, uh, but I, I doubt I doubt it. I really doubt it. Okay. Yeah. We keep cycling through the same players. We don't get to see, see Guma. You know, yeah. they were doing a fantastic job of showing us the Yahoo stacks last time. Oh, there oh, it is. Right as you say it. Yeah. But, uh, oh, maybe I have the power. Draven stacks? Draven stacks. Hey! 497. I do have the power! So when I, w when I said it, I think I was right. Down so much, but... uh. Uh oh, here's oh, no. the kill. <laughs> but he does have exhaust, and it is Cassante. Look at Zayus, he's trying to help. The cleanse comes in. Guma has to flash away, and he's oh. still going to get the execute. Jesus. And that's a kill. Now, they do have TP here available on Zayus. I don't know if they can really commit to this CRX, as now the TP comes in. They've got to do it. They've got to do it. It is a little bit late, but owner's in the pit. He's ulting out of the back line. Sponge is dead. Oh, no. It's disaster for DRX. It's an easy fight for T1. And this will be pretty much the end of the game, as massive amounts of golds went to the Draven. The Baron's going to go into the hands of T1. And they're already even pushing mid, as owner's just going to chase Pleta and keep him off the map. Zayus says, I want to piece of the action as well, and owner will pick up the kill. T1 running away with this game. I don't think that could have gone worse for DRX. I genuinely think if you said, what is the worst thing that could happen right now? That would have been it. That that was exactly it. Yeah. Um, that exact yeah. scenario. That, 
<laughs> that is, it's actually funny how Frog really gave Guma a jump scare. You can see Zeus was kind of like, you got him right, you're good. Yeah. He like hand walks him, he's like, okay, there's your kill, go and take Baron's taken, Dirac dies, Guma gets about 8 billion gold. Um, Approximately. Roughly, give or take. He has three and a half items at 25 minutes. Yeah, if you round up to 8 billion, it's about 8 billion gold. Yeah. Um, but he has a lot of items. I kind of want to, for science, of course, for science, I want to see him auto someone. <laughs> see how much damage it does. Yeah. All right, let's see it. Come on, good luck. Ideally, Teddy. Uh, Zeus is just gonna press his buttons. He's just blasting on them, and they're all dead. It's another execute to come in. And yeah, that was an auto as well onto the Sinjao. Other stuff is happening, but I'm just watching the Draven one shot people. As so yeah. Oh, are we gonna get to see how much damage it does? Because <laughs> he killed Planet, but he was one HP. Oh, there's Teddy. Run to him, Guma. Run to him. <laughs> That's surely one auto. They're like, nah, it's not worth it. Oh, the thing is, he doesn't have. He has a decent amount of crit, but if he doesn't crit as well, it's not. It's not the same. Teddy's like, oh, I'll just stop the wave. Wait, they already have a wave. And well, guys, this game is over. I'm sorry that game number two is not nearly as fun as game one, but T1 really bopped them over the head. Oh, but that's a Cassante. Yeah, that's a Cassante. He's nearly dead. Just three, four autos down to that health. As yeah, owner might go down here. The Nexus is very low as the. Are they going to hit the heal? Okay, they finally do. And that'll be the end of game two. T1, take the 2-0 tonight. These are the best highlights from today's 2024 LCK Summer Split matchup. Fan of it right now, especially with Ivern uh, in this meta. As nice. Death really level one. layering in the damage. And yeah, Gugger finally hits two. He's going to get the flash of the barrel who goes a bit early. But they've still got them underneath the turret and a bunch of brushes here as well, as it looks like they want to go for the return gank as Beryl going to look to tank it up. Actually, if Yoshiku tanks it perfectly, Beryl does get the first blood, unfortunately, but you tank that one up nicely and eat the damage. This top nice. lane is... Yes, that was very nice. This top lane is still going very heavily in favor of Mahal. Oh, well, I cursed him. Sorry, Mihail. Uh, you might just die now. As Perfect is on the chase, and the flash is not going to be forced, but it comes out now, as Perfect was on the chase here. Once again, sorry about that, Mihail. I underestimated my powers. Yeah, not going great. I don't really know what to add in that situation. It's just really not going well. Uh, and with, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but you drafted into this lane. Yeah. Well, the Cullen comes out as he hits level six. Colix, oh ooh, that was close. He had eight full health left. That was, you know, that was plenty, right? He doesn't have teleport. Um, they're diving the turret now as Beryl is going to tank up a bunch and he will go down, but it's another kill, another massive wave. At least this area is still there as now Sylvie trying to get revenge up in the top side. Perfect is not a flash, but it does not matter. He's about to die. <laughs> does feel that way. <laughs> Uh, and the plate's getting wrecked. Not a good omen. Considering how old... Uh oh. Uh-oh. So dead. Yeah. Well, he's going to line it up. That's the double stun. Death's still here, pushing in the wave. Sometimes they don't. You know, sometimes they don't actually catch it. So... Yeah. Well, they're Wait. still here. No! <laughs> no! No! Mahal! He's so dead. There's just no escaping. He's not even going to Dominus. He just accepts his fate. I guess he didn't see him. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you walk up if you knew Beryl was there? Uh, Sylvie? Uh-oh. Maybe wait for Cassante's ult to be over. Speaking of not seeing them, and yeah, he's, he's dead. Wow. So Sylvie is able to trade it back. Some big damage. Yeah. Depth, but it's Ezreal. So really the next moment for Death to be a little bit cautious is when Guger hits level 5. As now we've got an Ivern here, and Guger is not level 6, which is what I meant to say, as they're looking for the Q, and he's just going to die to Pyoshik. From Pyoshik, it is just a kill. Sylvie will get some grubs in the top side. That's six grubs. That's a lot of grubs. A lot of grubbing. Yes. Um, <laughs> thank you for your country. A lot of grubbing. Yeah. I do hope Sylvie gets Oblivion Orb, though. Works pretty well with the Ivan and Kalex. Well, you need to stop complimenting people, honestly, <laughs> Brendan. It's Sorry. Wait, Kalex is trying to fight. He's got some help from Mahail, who's coming down from top lane. And we've even got Guger in here, but the Magnus Storm trying to help out Pilshik, but I don't know if there's any hope for him, but it's an Ezreal kill first on top of it all. 
And then, of course, eventually Pioshik does go down, but they made a lot out of a sticky situation. Well, just a Q. Uh, we got a fight here. Barrel's in a lot of trouble as now Death, no flash just yet, has to stand up and try to fight, and he's gonna get the kill! Death does it again, and he's still alive, a Sylvie. Okay, he's gonna put him out of his misery. The Burn getting the job done, but man, Death gets so much value, and Barrel stayed alive throughout it all. The execution ends up failing them. Yeah, definitely a bit of an issue. It felt like, okay, well, Def's super low. I can save my flash, but you got to be careful as now here comes BDD. Culling available as it's getting huge amounts of damage. Kalix has to flash. The play you got to make. And unfortunately, didn't react in time, and so Def does get a kill back. And it's that 3 1 and 2 on the Ezreal. Pretty strong. Yeah. The main thing is that BDD and Def are pretty strong, and the Ivan will just amplify them, you know? Yep, absolutely. Here comes the Zeriel just to try to help as nice flash away from Sylvie. And now they're just diving mid as the Magnus Storm comes in. Barrel taking a bunch of damage, but Gugger and his buddy there has got to run away. And now Perfect is going to go down with that dive from the brand in the top lane. And it is a fed brand right now. Yeah. And we've seen what brands can do, uh, especially into Iverns, but uh, with this Ivern that's actually also relatively accelerated, by the time we get a team fight, which by the way, it's Infernal Soul, so we're probably gonna get some team fights here eventually. Fine. Uh, and it would just apply it to everyone, but I don't think he's going to. I feel like Corky's probably the most likely. Yeah. I haven't seen Corky's really do it. Probably not. There's a root there on a Gugger. He's in a bit of trouble. He goes for the quickness, but there's a massive Brello right on top of all of them. They were just trying to run away. As now Zildi going to throw everything in the kitchen sink into KT, but it just doesn't matter. And that's a shutdown as well for Pioshik. Situation, especially because you're so squishy and so vulnerable to CC. Uh, yeah, not pan out too well. And now KT will pick up another tower on the bot side. Nongshim still really want this top tower. And he is on the run. He's level 14, and he's pretty fed on this Renekton, so it's not like he's going to go down immediately. They can't overtaste for him. But both these teams will fight over the Infernal Drake. Yeah, we see KT come top. BDD playing the flank to kind of try and deny this Renekton. They all come together. If Sylvie gets a big combo, you can see he's looking for it, but he's struggling to approach against this Ezreal. He's doing so much poke. Yeah. Pogue not really coming in, but now the Rell Ultimate is going to catch everyone into the Cassante, into the wall, as the synergy was insane there from the side of Perfect and Barrel. As now Perfect in a bit of trouble, oh, but he's just going to dunk onto the guy as it's Jivu, it's Mahail alone, desperate to try to carry this one, but it's not looking good. Dev pokes out Jivu, Mahail goes down. Might just be a clean ace from the side of KT Rolster. As Zewo is just dead. Down he goes. Nowhere to, nowhere to leave to. It's a triple kill for death. It's tier one and a team who hasn't. <laughs> uh, but KT played that one so clean. They're now going to look towards the Baron. Will they lose their base first is uh, I think something. It's a worth trade. I think it's worth. Okay. There Here we, we go. go. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I want to see that. I, we have to see it. Uh, well, Beryl says, I don't care. And Sylvie's the only one who's actually fed, so I'm just gonna ult Sylvie alone, and down he will go. Min meanwhile, the top tier one did go down. But I have a feeling the Nexus is going to fall very soon. And Def's like, I don't need that redemption. I'm not gonna stand in the circle. I'm too cool for that. And he's just doing ridiculous damage at this point. He's got three items, has a Bloodthirster. And with the Baron buff, and... Wait, he's got another top lane tower. He did. It's even better. But uh, now he's going to TP into the fight as they get the root down. Everybody jumps on in their barrel, trying to get in on the action. But Gugger's going to be pushed away. Kalix is going to be pushed away. They've got bushes. They've got Baron buff. They've got five members barreling down here on the Nexus. And you just desperate to try to do anything, something. Now, here. they're not going to hit the Nexus for some reason. And there's the stun onto Perfect. Now Death's in a bit of trouble, but there's a second AD carry and a true shot barrage where that came from. So they're able to regroup. They've got shields, they've got Ivern, and they're going to try to kill Sylvie again as they fully in League of Legends once again. Jiu's still alive here and actually doing a lot of damage on it, but he immediately gets popped by the 280 carries on the side of KT. And it looks like finally KT Rolster will end the game. I know a lot of our viewers must have played some Seraphine in Swarm.
and yep. know some of her abilities now. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to back on this wave, it looks like. Cannon wave. Uh-oh, no flash BDD. Yep, and Sedwani looking for the lockdown. It's going to be knocked off the wall. BDD is so dead. His first blood for Kalix in the mid lane on his Yone. Oh, Yoshi's coming in bot. Oh, Arcane Shift down. Uh, he does have Flash and Cleanse and a heal from Gugger. Is it going to be enough as nice tanking here from the side of Pyoshik as he tries to get away and oh. he will the timing on the Twisted Retreat is going to save him. It's actually called Twisted Advance. Oh, sorry. Twisted Advance away from your enemy. Yeah, I think Twisted Retreat is better actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, just really nicely played from Pyoshik. Super patient with the root. Uh, Pyoshik was a little bit in the background, but uh, here, Pyoshik gets aggro with a Q. Leaves the charge, tanks the stun, the heal keeps him healthy. And then W's the minion, because if he W's Guga, he'll just get aggro again. Side. Yeah. Uh, I think... Um, Guga... <laughs> well, he's alone, and uh, yeah, nobody else is here. And KT slowly learning that this should be a free dive, and uh, that it will be. Goshi pretty tanky at this point, and that's going to be another plate going over to them, as well as another kill onto Death. Uh, Death has arrow again already. Yep. They could honestly just circle around and redive. Yep. Errol still has ult. There's the arrow. There's the encore. Jiu throws out the true shot barrage. And even a third ultimate from the Maokai as Beryl is nearly going to die to the turret, but it doesn't matter. One of the messiest dives I've ever seen that still works. And they get the kill. Meanwhile, up at the top side, Perfect is just absolutely clobbered. All things like, considered, uh, hot side, not so much. Hot side, not, not really. Yeah. In this case, Seems okay to leave the Ezreal or Gnome Shim. And now we do have a lot of people coming down to the bottom side trying to utilize that Yone lead. But now we got double TP from the side of KT. And Barrel got away. Pyoshe, they're looking to get on top of Kalix here, who's in a lot of trouble. Or he uses Unbound Soul. Meanwhile, Perfect just zones them all away as now oh, an arrow's going to come in. And Barrel looking for it and finally throws it out. But that's way too late. And Mahaya wasn't there at all. Thought maybe there was an angle to get a big one. Might have been just up a couple of seconds away. But uh, either way, five members of KT down in the bot lane. Uh, and more poke coming in. They could honestly probably dive this. They're all low. <laughs> the next wave. The yeah. next got full fury stacked up. Uh, we do have a TP coming in. And so they're going to look to turn here onto the Renekton. This perfect is dead again. And now Mahail gets in, flashes on a death, forces his flash as the rest of the chase will stop. <laughs> Not again! Well, yeah, he, he's alone. He's gonna get rooted up. The slow comes in. There's a Maokai here as well. These three have just been sticking together this entire game. The Dreammaker, I think that's what I'm called, and the Moonstone. So he is vibing. I call it Bubbles. I like that. Also, yeah. on the other side, Uga has the fast pack. Uh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, he's still Yone, so I don't know about that one, Pyoshik. But it was cool. Yeah, uh, Guga just has the fast pants and nothing else. So I think Barrel definitely winning out in terms of useful items. The Chemtech Soul? No, it's Mountain. Okay. You don't decide the souls, bro. Sorry. I, yeah, I don't have that power. Yeah. Uh, That's not me. Rockler hates EP on Maokai after the nerfs. And Guga's just... He's just trying to clear one ward. And now Sylvie's just sending it into that back line. And he is going to throw an ult and a barrel with zero follow-up. Okay, now a true shot barrage comes out. But Braum going to get in front of a lot of different engage abilities from the side of KT. So finally gets some value out of that pick. And KT are just going to back away, waiting for Meganar to time out, you would imagine. Big thing is they still have BD's ult. They still have barrels ult. They're still ready to fight this. And the sustain coming in. They're healthy. Nongshim. Don't look pretty low in the health bar department, and Mihail's ult's time now. I don't think they can contest this at all. Just giving it up. Mihail just runs away, and the rest of the team decides to back off of that one. So first Mountain Drake to KT. Yeah. For something, Barrel. Well, Depth is going to be slowed up, but he's not going to be stunned up. And there's that frog damage! <laughs> uh, no, most of it being Ezreal, as Depth is forced to back off. And there's not much of a wave here, but we do have some little 
Grubby's coming out. Her Triforce is definitely going to be a lot of damage, and he's just tanking turret shots. Yeah. Taking down that bottom tier one. He's pretty strong. Push on in and get some presence here in the mid lane, as now the arrow is going to hit you. There's the cleanse already just trying to poke him away, but look at the poke difference as Jivu going to flash forward, nearly takes Barrel's head off. And now the true shot oh. is going to get him. Barrel doesn't respect it, and here comes Zoxim looking for the bite down as they will take down Pioshik as well. And no Drake goes to Nongsim, but they get two kills, so they want the Baron. And honestly, Jiwoo is that guy, and Ezreal is that broken, just dismembering Barrel. Doesn't even get a chance to ult there. Now they will look towards Baron. KT trying to take Dragon in return. But Mihail's hovering. I don't think he's strong enough to 1v3, though. So it's a Baron for Dragon uh, trade, and Nongshim is going to try and get the mid tier one as well. Definitely a trade up for Nongshim. But uh, KT at least gets something and managed to slink away. Just you would dip, I guess. Yeah. You know, we were talking about the Ezreal player tier list um, <laughs> on the space. It's changing on a daily basis. It's changing on a daily basis. As you say, he puts his hand up. He's like, remember me? I'm pretty good at this champ too, Dragons. If they can try to delay and not fall too far behind, I feel like there is still an angle. Whoa. Here we go again. Pelsic's like, wait, I'm going to actually go for the engage this time, and it's not going to work out, as he somehow forgets that the Unbound Soul is a thing twice on Yone. And Nongshim are just barreling down as, uh, you know, the slight chances, I was saying, for KT are getting slimmer by the minute. Yeah, not looking good. And Pelsic makes another mistake, just gets focused down, and he's not actually that tanky. The locket not doing enough. Oh, I think Perfect's fine here. Yeah, bit of a rotation over from the side of Nongshim. It is a 5v4. They got bot inhibitor. And the poke is coming in in a big way. Uh, once again, another true shot barrage is death, and they still have Baron buff, so that's going to be two inhibitors at least. It might be three as mid wave is here as well. Yeah, I don't really think they can do anything to stop them immediately. They have Barrel Zolt, but they haven't found an angle with it yet. And that's three inhibitors down. They're against Baron, and the Nexus Tower is taking damage. KG need to do something soon. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Generally, Baron, uh, Rebel Baron power plays are not 6,000 gold to the one team that has it. But in this case, with this many structures going down, you can see that number continue to climb in KT. They finally pull the trigger as all the Ultra fired straight into the Braum shield. And not much is going to go right for them. College does go pretty deep, but Perfect is already dead pretty much. He is going to get away. Pioshik falls to Mahayal, the very fed Nar, as now Nosim is going to take down them. They will play with their food, they say. And they will take game number two in their favor and tie up the series. You don't give them credit to play Caitlyn Lux? T1 beat them with it. Anyway. Surely uh, Winter's bite on someone. Many on the There's not much they can do. Uh, they're going to get the stun and the Q on a Jiwoo. Here's BDD, who is a Oriana. Jiwoo is going to have the flash, but he dies anyway. And BDD picks up the kill. Well, As if it weren't bad enough. You saw what happens when an Ezreal loses lane, he still carries. How about when an Ezreal wins lane? And also, you've just given first blood to BDD uh, on this Oriana, so th things are really bad. Jibu knows summoners as well. Easy time for Barrel, who has Hex Flash, so you can definitely abuse that. Not the best start. Yeah. We have seen Oriana once. I believe it was BDD uh, that did play it. And it's a win rate. Huh? It's 100 oh, win yeah. Rate. One out of one. <laughs> 100%, and uh, he certainly knows how to pick this one up. It was either him or Faker. It was definitely, um, you know, it, those are the, kind of the two guys that are classic Oriana players and have played it throughout all the metas. Oriana was just kind of perma-pick in uh, many times. But, um, yeah, now he's got a kill, and the Oriana still does a lot of damage, especially if you get ahead and you can build a quick couple of items. She just becomes really oppressive, and she kind of can do a similar thing to Ezreal. Not quite as well as him, don't get me wrong, but you know, you, you throw forward a, a QW, you can chunk someone if they don't have MR I think after you get a couple of items. As well, like Azir does look good in a lot of matchups because you can utilize the soldiers, you know, dodge away from their skill shots, get some autos down. But Oriana can just charge at you QW and auto and kind of win trades here. Yeah. They stepped so far in a barrel, they're confident because they have the Braum, but BDD waited. The first stun comes in. 
Defs get as much damage as possible out. And then Jiu ends up cleansing the Ignite damage late. And it's a short stun because of the tenacity. But you either have to... I think you just save the cleanse for the Table. stun. Or just cleanse Ignite early. We have a oh. Yeah, they're just going in. The door has fallen. But Jiu still trying to get ahead. But he is nearly dead. As one more auto would do it. And guess who's here? It's Lee Sin. One of the best divers. Just going to kill Guger first because he says, you know. What are you going to do? He's emoting him. Yeah, he's just dead. And the Ezreal's going to get the kill this time. So Ezreal's got a kill. Oriana's got a kill. po 6 got a kill. And look at the right of your screen. Look how close the cleanse is to coming up. They find a great winner to punish while it's down. Beryl focuses the damage, focuses the CC onto Jiru. And the cleanup is just so good uh, from KT there. Def playing it almost perfectly as well. You know, he's had a couple of Ezreal games between all that. And, you know, BDD with that early kill and the farm lady has, he already picked up Lost Chapter and has boots, so a professional, you I know? Thought, yeah, we're trying to be... I feel like there's going to be some viewers who are literally pulling the hairs out over the Ezreal. And they're like... Yeah, it, it's justified. Well, at least you has all the components you always want. You know, we've seen Caitlyn build Infinity Edge first, and when you build Infinity Edge, you love coming back to lane with Pickaxe, Cloak of the <laughs> like, because, you know, obviously everyone talks about new champs being broken like Cassante. Uh-oh. Oh. Cleanse coming in. Deft has to flash away, but Engage Brawn comes in, and they're going to kill him. As now we're getting another Maokai in some trouble, as Beryl is looking to punish Sylvie. We'll force out the flash from said Sylvie. <laughs> it is five plates in the bottom lane that are about to go to Deft and Barrel. It is six Void Grubs. And the first Turret Blood also going to go into their hands. Yeah. Shout from the CC from Barrel. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Cleanse comes through this time, but uh, we've got a BDD nice. behind him. Power. <laughs> and the TP is going to come in from the Azir. Barrel a little bit low, but it's only him and the Shockwave hits them both. And Kalix is here, but he's just going to die. He's just dead. He's not even going to do anything. And Jiu also is going to fall. And oh, Mahal's here. Now Mahal TPs. And he's going in. Well, there was no other direction to go, I guess. Big Q, he's still dead. Will he get the kill? Yes, he will. OK, he gets the shutdown on a BDD. So I guess hashtag worth. But yeah, KT, a huge fight in their favor. Ezreal? Uh, yeah, Ezreal, 2.3k gold lead. Yeah, uh, I um, think you didn't mention him. Uh, ooh, nice little catch here from Barrel. Kalex has to flash away, and, and still he might go down. This is Ezreal we're talking about. If that Q hits, you get an arcane shift back, you never know. Yeah. He doesn't even hit a spike oh, yet. Oh, it's Infernal Soul. Just a little bit of extra scaling for your... Uh, yeah, I, three carries. I, I for one think that Ezreal Mystic Shot should feel like the blast wave of a nuclear uh, bomb. So yeah. I, I think I think Infernal Soul was needed for KT. Uh, yeah, they don't really have much control over the map. And they're just going to have to let this one go. Although Sylvie is hanging around. Well, at least they got those two kills. Because they haven't gotten anything else. Yes. Well, okay. Kalix is going to get away this time. A little bit close there against Barrel. Sylvie, okay, they're going to press their buttons. They say, okay, this might be your best chance, but then they just... Uh, wait, no, Sylvie's going back in. Uh, Kalix is like, okay, I guess we are going for this, but now TP's coming in, and the Shockwave hits the front line, and it doesn't quite matter because Sylvie and Guger are relatively squishy compared to the very fed Oriana, as that's going to be a couple of kills in the plates of KT as they're looking for a bit more of the chase potential. Pretty huge. Nice kick from Kyoshik. And uh, silly, very nice escape from Kalix as somehow he makes his way out of there. Yep, just it looked like Nongshin were trying to find an angle to come in, but more members of KT were ready to be there. Uh, well, not even necessarily more members, stronger members, I think, is, is the key thing. Uh, and they kind of just end up crushing it. Kalix has to be a little bit careful. Uh, they could just one-shot you. They'll take the inhibitor tower at 17 minutes. Go mid! Where are you going Go with this one, perfect? Mitch, you too! Must be Brahma's doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and I, we talked about this earlier on, you know, only Ezreal is rough enough. It's already obnoxious enough. But when you have Orianna as well, you just do not get to stand anywhere. When you're this, even when you're not even this far behind, but when the enemy team is ahead and they have both those champions, the amount of poke that they have is just ridiculous. I love when I dodge a Mystic Shot that's going to do a third of my health and walk into an Oriana ball and die. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
<laughs> right after you said that, I'm like, it's by the way, a third of his health. And then it's like the actually way, a third of his health. Infantry? Well, Armana, what, what is happening there? Uh, I think he's a bit fed. He didn't stack it very well, I guess. He's my, he's my man of stack now. Yeah. Well. Yeah, KT are very far ahead in this game. They're going to get the Infernal Soul points. Maybe it's one of these things where when you're behind, you're like stacking your tier as much as you can. You're like, I need this. I'm so weak. And when he's it's not going to go very I well wish for them. Luck. Oh boy, here comes Kasante. He's just going to flash on Ziwu. And the Maokai ultimate is pretty good for the disengage, but it just doesn't matter. The wallets are huge. That is a huge divide, though, from the side of Alex. Nicely down. They take down Def and BDD. It's going to be isolated as well. But again, the wallets are just way too heavy here. BDD getting sliced on, getting diced on. And then he gets disengaged. And there it is. Double kill comes through for Pioche. It doesn't matter how the fight is going. It's still a huge win for KT. Oh, no, 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 no. He's found him. He's found him. Oh, boy. Yep. So Portal Combat. Oh, flash no. rim, Barrel. Flash rim. Yes. He yes. did it. <laughs> Look at all those cinders. I didn't want the disengage. I know who my POG mode is. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the build or anything. I'm just saying it's. Yeah. It's. Once he finishes that, it's not suddenly going to fix the game, you know? Yeah. Uh, Seed's coming in with the Baron buff. BDD, again, it's just you don't get to stand anywhere near them, and that wasn't even a good shockwave as Barrel is going to eat a lot of that damage, but so will Jiwu on the poke. As Def he, he doesn't even care about uh, the rest of the team. He just looks for that back line. And Mihail's just going to Dominus here to try to save the mid turret desperately. No him they tasted victory in game two. It's enough to take down Genji right now. Not no, I don't think so. I <laughs> <laughs> Although, I, I don't think we're ever going to find out because, you know, they won't leave it open. Yeah, maybe that's why they're winning. <laughs> maybe that's why Genji win. They don't mess about. I He's like, I'm in the game, I swear. <laughs> I love science. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's got Mortal Reminder. That'll help. Um, yeah, Just KT... Need to remind Def that he's mortal. That is important. Yeah, I think that's very applicable in this situation where he doesn't feel very mortal. And yeah, KT with this uh, push with the Infernal Soul. I was going to say Baron because it felt like they had Baron, but they don't actually have Baron. So yeah, they're just pushing in as a team with Infernal Soul and just looking to poke them down. Def really wants to E in and just Mystic shot you. You can see it. Yeah. He's hunting for it. Oh, this is your chance. Look at that shield. Oh, they're just going to go for Kalex. Oh, nice setup here from the side of Barrel, but the Q3 misses from the Cassante. And now Barrel's kind of in an awkward spot. He is quite tanky, but uh, yeah, he just survives forever. Here comes the flank, though, as Mahail thinking about this angle. Perfect pretty low himself, but Nongsim not going to commit to it. And oh, man, the Shockwave is going to take Uger's head off. Perfect pretty tanky. He's just going to back away. Dept is going to take a bit of damage, but not able to take down the Nexus turret just yet. Yeah, he's got a there, so he can sustain up. Nongshim trying to hold on, but it's against very improbable odds. BDD getting close to dying. And oh, a bit of damage comes in from the Super Minion. And we got more where that came from as there's the E forward. Looking for it. Trying to, to stick that damage. Everybody else is backing perfect. Looking to TP back into this one. As now Depth has an angle that just auto onto the turrets. Takes multiple turret shots and doesn't even care. Oh, it's you again. Yeah, Dew is, uh, he's got a Cassante on him. There's the knockup. Does go for the cleanse and is, is just massive chaos in the base right now. And Mile goes in. He's going to go down. It's desperation from Nongsim, but they will be cleaned up. As Steph says, don't you dare let me play the champion ever again. And KT as a team absolutely clobber them. These were some of the best highlights from today's 2024 LCK Summer Split matchup. Which moment was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. This is OP, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.